it's impossible not to dance <laughs> when you hear that. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? It's the 404 Show on Wednesday, February 27th, 2013. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. And I'm Ariel Nunez. Welcome to the program. Very happy to have you guys here on the show today. We've got some uh, listening parties to get to attend to. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. And hopefully they won't let some unicorn in the studio today. Because that was crazy. That was absolutely crazy. Anyway. Annoying. It was annoying, right? What the hell is going on there? Creep. Creep. I liked your Instagram photo yesterday. (laughs) The guy was just roaming around the office (laughs) bugging people while they were trying to work. (laughs) You should follow. I guess follow all of us, right? Follow the 404. Ariel, mm-hmm. it's it's just Ariel. For R, it's R underscore E underscore L underscore. Mm-hmm. Wait for uh, Twitter. Easy. For Twitter? No, not no, for, for, for Instagram. For Instagram. Yeah. 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 Right on. Sweet go. guys. So in the pre-show, Justin was playing uh, some audio for us. Oh yeah. So uh, you want to just get to this right now? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I was browsing SoundCloud this morning and I found this artist. Uh, his name is Oleg Berg. He's Ukrainian, and uh, what he does is he takes popular songs. Uh, that have been in the canon for decades, and then he reworks them to change the scale. So if it's originally in a major scale, he'll augment it to be in a minor scale. And it sounds the same, but different yeah. at the same time. It's really weird. Very and awkward. The only way that we can explain it is to kind of play a couple songs. And uh, I want to play a few that we didn't get to in the pre-show to yes. surprise you guys. Yes. So yes. earlier in the show, we uh, we did Beat It, right? Michael Jackson's Beat It. Uh, what else did we play? Um... Uh, California Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers. But uh, let's see. I want to play you guys Smells Like Teen Spirit. Okay. Uh, it's originally in a minor scale. Mm-hmm. So uh, Oleg played it in a major scale. So uh, let's listen to what it sounds like. I just, it's like this guy. It's a little painful. He's like a, he's like a sadomasochist, this guy. Yeah. Sometimes it Ooh. works. Other times yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, you guys let me know whether you like it or not. Ooh, it, that's it's weird. It's man. weird because certain notes drop down, right? Yeah. Where they and some don't. And some go up where they shouldn't. Yeah. I want to hear the singing. Yeah. This is mostly the, the same. same. Yeah. yeah. But the vocals. Can I do it? Ah. <laughs> 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 That's you painful. You were saying in the pre-show that it sounds like the karaoke version. Yeah, yeah. This is really weird. Yeah. yeah. It's so familiar, right? It would only work with songs that you have known to sound in the past. It feels what, like... What if you didn't hear the song before? Do you think it'd be cool? No, because it's out of tune. It's not... It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it just doesn't go well. It just doesn't go well. This yeah. is what I would imagine listening to music after having a concussion would be like. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like this, and you're sort of out of it, and you're like... Uh, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, totally. Let's listen it's very, to another it's just, one. It's just straight up awkward for your ears. Yeah. is what it is. I think Radiohead's "Creep" actually kind of works. Um, well, it's out of all of them, but here let's because this is usually in a major scale, and putting in the minor kind of makes it darker, which is what the lyrics go with too. But it still sounds like it comes from someone who's tone deaf. Like it, it's tough to tell whether or not. It's tough to tell whether or not you would like it without knowing the original. Yeah. But I don't think you would. Yeah. I don't ever want to listen to Radiohead again. How about that? I didn't want to listen to Radiohead before this. And I sure shit don't want to do it anymore after (laughs) hearing this. Okay, one more. Yeah. You guys want to hear Lady Gaga's Bad Romance? Wait, wait. wait, Do we have choices? What no. else? Well, okay, yeah. Let's see. I would. I do want to hear Gaga, but I also want to hear another one, too. Um, They have somebody that I used to know. Um, no. The original was in minor. This is in major. You don't want to hear that. Nope. Sweet Dreams. Nope. Uh, we, I think we heard that already. Okay, let's hey let's... Jude in minor scale. Ooh, I'll do that and give me that? some Gaga. Okay, so here's Hey Jude. Hey Jude. Oh, Ooh, right away with the piano. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded this in Halloween. <laughs> Ooh, this oh, yeah. is brutal. I like this. No, it doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. The vibrato works. Two days of Beatles, huh? Yeah. Better, <laughs> This is weird. You want me to fast forward it? I want the na na na. 
I like it. I think mm. this one works too. This part is somehow working in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, I think this one works the best out of all of them yeah. so far. Like, I almost, I, I could see someone believing that this was a song. Yeah. God, people in the chat were like, I'm going to commit suicide. Right <laughs> cool, Cooler Star makes a good point. It's like auto-untune. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, last one. Uh, let's play Bad Romance. Yes. Minors. Most of Lady Gaga stuff is in a major key because it's yeah. pop music. <laughs> Her voice is different too yeah. in this. I know it's not this, bad. It's not bad, but you know what it's like? It it sounds like there's a plug not in. You know, it yeah. sounds like you're getting like 75% of everything. Mm -hmm. Something's missing. Yeah. It sounds like a DJ that's trying to be cool, but it's just not working. Yeah, yeah. Like there's that pitch thing on the keyboard. Yeah, that you totally. Rock back and forth. It sounds like he's hitting that too much. Like, don't remember, touch that. Yeah. Remember Lady Gaga? <laughs> remember huh? when Lady Gaga was a thing? Yeah, I remember her. R.I.P. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to get better and make another record that doesn't suck. All right, yeah, there you go. That was certainly a bad romance. <laughs> yeah, so there's a ton of other ones. He he does like Summertime um, by Ella Fitzgerald, Smooth Operator by Sade. How are we not listening to Smooth Operator right <laughs> you now? Listen, yes, I want to yeah, listen to Smooth. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> this is in This majors. is it. This is like the future of 80s music here. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this oh. is awkward. Yeah. That alto sax having problems right now. <laughs> Ooh, is it sexier or less sexy? Mm. Now it turned in. It went from 80s pop to like porno music. Like lounge porn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so happy. All right, after the first chorus. <laughs> Never thought we'd be playing Sade on the show. <laughs> no. Dude, smooth. Weird. You don't mess with smooth operator. This is weird, huh? It sounds more like a uh, uh, like island music. Yeah, you know, it's like it's very symphony. tropical. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Not yet. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Kula Star is in the chat room. Like he's like, this is a very long elevator ride. <laughs> like a hula version of like a song. <laughs> yeah, totally. Nice. All right, that's enough of that. All right, well, if you want to check out more, uh, he has a YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash user slash major vs minor. Major versus minor. And then there's a SoundCloud account too in the same name. And I'll link to those in the chat cool. in the uh, rundown. Question. Yeah. Is there any talent involved in this? No. Okay, he's just running it through some sort of filter. Yeah, he doesn't just he doesn't replay it himself on his own instruments. I think he's, he's not just, he's uh, not tweaking button. it manually. No, I don't think so. Although right. I'm sure it takes time. Yeah. You know, things aren't going to render magically by themselves. <laughs> Why wait. can't you do stuff like you this? Wait a little yeah, bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do any hip hop songs though, which I think would be interesting because there's a lot more lyrics. Yeah, involved, but yeah, I don't know if it'd be as interesting. No, no. Yeah, you know, like real Talking instruments. Or... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, all right. Seems like every day we're talking about some stupid ass iPhone app. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I guess the the quest continues to find the most ridiculous. This is not ridiculous. Asinine. This is really cool. Okay, it's it's not asinine. It's, it's not. It's a nine. This is definitively <laughs> a nine. It's very a nine. It, it sounds. It sounds weird because the headline reads, a new app turns your iPhone into a mobile urine lab. Right. But this is actually useful for... For who? For... Okay, let me just explain here. Please. So uh, there's a 29-year-old entrepreneur from Mumbai, and uh, he recently did a TED Talk 
That was really interesting. Uh, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce his name, but uh, he's found a way to basically use your smartphone's camera to test your own urine. No, you could in Michigan Ingewall. Okay, yeah, there you go. I, I guess let's <laughs> that's say that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, so you don't actually have to pee on your phone like the uh, name kind of implies. Right. All you do is pee into a cup like you normally would to check your urine, but this time you don't have to send it out to a lab to get the results. You use your camera and a, a, a couple of test strips that you pee on to compare the colors of your urine. So basically it's called U-Check. This is the name of the app. And um, it, you, you pee on this uh, uh, strip, right, this chemical strip, that changes colors, and then the camera on your phone takes a picture of it and then analyzes that color and compares it to uh, a color on a map that indicates things like glucose levels, protein levels, nitrates, and other parameters like that in your urine. Yeah. So this can be helpful. This is the practical application of it. It can be helpful for those checking for things like glucose levels or sugar levels in their diet for their diabetes or uh, kidneys, or their bladder infection problems, or liver problems, or something as simple as, like, a urinary tract infection. Okay. So you don't have to go to a doctor anymore. For those without insurance and things like that, you basically pay $25 for a pack of these strips. It's 99 cents to buy the app, and then you can have your own urine lab at home. That's pretty cool. Right? I, 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 yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean... I mean, this is basically what the, seem like the whole pregnancy thing. test was. No, I mean, well, I'm assuming you pee into... Your toilet. No, I know. I'm just saying it's just, you know, it's just weird. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird. It seems like, I, you know, why, why am I doing this? Yeah. At least it's not like a square thing where it's like a hardware attachment you pee onto. You just oh, do thankfully. it Oh, thankfully. Yeah. I like how, for some reason, in this screenshot on the phone, the app reads that it's testing Tony Stark's urine. Yeah, Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Why not? Like, I don't get it. But Iron Man's a human being, man. Yeah. You know? It's really cool, though. I mean, previously, the same guy, he created an app that checks your uh, uh, glucose levels alone for people with diabetes. I just um, hope he doesn't come out. This is for a bunch of people. Yeah. I just, I just don't want to see the prostate one. <laughs> <laughs> Not looking forward to that iPhone app. <laughs> well, you got a few years until you guys start doing that, right? When do you start? I, like 50? I don't 50? know. I don't know. I yeah. think, I don't know. I think that's when you start yeah, doing the 50. yearly prostate 50? exams. That's what I heard. I heard um, 40. 40? Mm. 30, 20, whatever. Just get yourself checked out. <laughs> I just feel like you, I don't know, even though it seems like it's copying the process of checking it through a doctor, Yeah, still would take that as the final say. Right. That's that's where my, um, you know, concern lies. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Still go, you should probably still go to a doctor. That's, what I, that's the point out. I'm if trying to If you find yeah. something wrong in your urine. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go talk about the uh, the dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary. They've added a new word that I'm sure we can all relate to. Not me. Not you, huh? I don't know. What that They've is. added friend zone <laughs> to the dictionary. What so, is wrong with Oxford? They said they just let it all. They just <laughs> let it all. Just out. given up entirely. They well, they add, they've added a lot of you know sort of shady uh, words in the past. Yeah, like last year, Oxford Dictionary's word of the year was uh, GIF. Right, which was, is which is interesting. That's a legitimate art form because well, it evolved into a word. Right, but then they also have stuff like dumb phone. Um, I don't know what that tweetable. is. Is that a flip phone? Yeah, it's like a flip phone that isn't very smart. Tweetable as well, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, neck beard. No, no, no. This is what they wanted to. This is what they're proposing. This is what Black Book Mag is proposing. But <laughs> and, they did add friend zone. So friend zone, it really is a two-word word. word. Mm -hmm. Uh. And it's basically how do how do you how do you well let's read the this? official definition. Okay, sure. The official definition is it's a noun, an informal noun. It's a situation in which a platonic relationship exists between two people, but one of whom has an undeclared romantic or sexual interest in the other. And this is it used in a sentence. I always wind up in the friend zone watching them pursue other guys. Friend, zo friend zone's not yet? a place you want to be. No, yeah. and once you're in friend zone, you never leave. Yeah. Untrue. Really. You're Unless look, you're it's looking the girl at it. that's in the friend zone. You're looking at it. What are you talking about? Proof positive that you can ascend the, the friend zone. <laughs> From the friend no zone? way. You've dug yourself out of the friend zone? I'm married to the proof. Wait, what? Yeah. You were previously in, <laughs> I was in friend Stacey's. Zoned. You were the yeah. mayor of Stacy's friend zone? I was the only inhabitant of that land. Wow. Okay. For like six months. Shut up. I will not. <laughs> Tell us a story. No, because it's personal. But <laughs> long story short, and I'm not 
joking. You were friends first. I, we were we were best friends first. Like you couldn't separate us because mm. we were so uh, you know attached at the hip, but just metaphorically. Mm. I wanted it to be a different yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's how it was. We went to uh, you know went to the same college. We had the same classes, and we were really friends first. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of threats and a lot of convincing. No. Right. But uh, no, whatever. How how However, it happened, it happened, but we evolved into that, and I forced her to love me. That sounds <laughs> like a crime. Like that. that sounds but like it's premeditated true. crime. You know, it's just two hands around the neck will do wonders. <laughs> oh, no, man. But th I'm kidding. That's, yeah, that's, that's, hey, look, Link Blue, same here. Another person who um, ascended the friend zone. Right. Look back in your rear view mirror. That was the friend zone. <laughs> you're in different land now. now. You're in bone zone. You're in, you're in Bonerville. <laughs> you know. Um, how many times did she refer to you as her little brother, though? Because what? I mean, no, these are the that's signs never that, happened. These are the signs that you're in the friend zone, right? But, if, if if she says you're like a brother to me, bad shit, sign. You're in no, the friend that zone. Never, oh god. If she talks it's, about the guy she's hooking up with or the problems with her current boyfriend, yeah, right. That means you're in the friend zone. Well, she. I don't. Did she, I don't think she ever. I mean, there's a difference between being friends, which sounds like what you and Stacy were and being in the friend zone, right? Hmm. That's what I'm. I'm saying that there's a difference between friends. Yeah. yeah. And then if you're only a friend, that's when you're in the friend zone. Right. So it sounds like you were just friends. Right. Then, but that. So no. But I was friend zone. You bridged because the gap. I because I wanted to take it to the next step. Like and you was, asked her to the movies one time and she showed up with like five of her girlfriends. Yeah. And I was like, this is <laughs> not what we signed up for. Yeah. I've been friend zoned right. before <laughs> it was even a word or terminology. And there's like a stamp, right? Yeah. <laughs> right on my head. <laughs> stamp friend, zone. friend zoned. But yeah, it happened. And, you yeah. know, we, uh, I, look, I'm not going to get into the delicate intricacies of our, you know, maturation as a couple. Yeah. But certain. Things came to light, mm -hmm. a lot of ins and outs and what have yous, and that's we are where we are now. We was be, alcohol the impetus to getting out of the friend no, zone? No, other the other, drugs, other, uh, other drugs, other drugs. Other drugs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only one person took the drugs. It was, uh, you know, it took a lot. I mean, it it is what it is. We just yeah. we just really spent more time together, right? And you know, after a few like PowerPoint presentations on why she, <laughs> she should. No, Jeff, I don't want no, to No, if you have. will notice over here, We're you'll see the fun level will go, you know? <laughs> I don't know. We're such good friends right now. I don't want to ruin what we have so far. Do you want to know You're what I did? You're such a nice guy. Do why can't I meet a guy like you? Do you want to know what yeah. I did? Well, and, I, and, and maybe someone else can find some success in yeah. similar advice. Uh-huh. But I, you know, she's probably going to be upset that I'm disclosing this, no, but, disclose away. you know, I... I kind of gave her an ultimatum. Oh. And I was like, look, because I knew she valued our friendship. I knew she did. And I was like, all right. I sat down in a dark apartment with a candlelight, uh -huh. and I wrote a, you know, a mischievous plan. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And I won. Dude, that's so <laughs> mysterious. No, what's <laughs> no, but I was like, look, I, I'm, I, I, I gave her an ultimatum. I said, look, you know, I don't yeah, want to do this friend crap anymore. Right, and that's what you have to do. Like, you can't just... Be friends, you know, there's a statute of limitations on when you can have that conversation. I think six months is probably the most you can spend before you really got to be honest with them. Right. right? I, think I think guys so. go into it thinking that, well, I'm going to parlay this friendship into something more and it never happens that right. way. Right. But the argument is, do you think girls know that the guy is into them and they still do it anyway because yes. they mm -hmm. like being liked? Yes. It's a, yep. it's a human trait. It doesn't matter who it is. Even guys. I mean, I've right. had kind of things happen to me like that Don't when I was younger. Yourself. You know? Okay. <laughs> and like, no, everyone likes being liked. Sure. Right? And you know, girl, girls know when of a guy likes them do. because yeah. they've been they're battling not, that all their life. Every yeah. time they step out of their house, they know that They're guys. not stupid. Yeah. They're they not are stupid. not they're stupid. They're the opposite of stupid. They are very bright. Very cunning. Right? And they just have, you know, things in their head. They'll act one way, but think the other. Right. So you got to manipulate that. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> I agree. We've had it Manipulation. all. Manipulation. No, but uh, you know, I'm sure every, you know, uh, situation is is unique in yeah. its own right. But that's what I did. I want to know how you got out of it. I told you the ultimatum. That's it. That's it a, that's a tough it's, thing. It's tough. I mean, that's kind of demanding. I was I was going all in right there, yeah. man. That's good. You know, I put I had all my chips and I pushed them in the mm -hmm. middle of the table and I said all in. Yeah, I think an argument can be made for getting out of the friend zone by just making a move, right? Like yeah. just make a move and do it well, soon. Do it like right now.
Well, I think you also, again, need to assess the situation and decide whether or not, you know, you're at that point where you can, you know, bring those elements out. Yeah. You and don't talk to her friends about it. No, oh, I that, feel like the guys always make that same freaking yeah, mistake. Yeah, yeah. They always try I to did, talk to I made friends that about mistake. It. I did. <sighs> Stupid mistake. Don't think her friends aren't telling her. Yeah, for don't, sure. That's one, the don't think their friends. They do. And 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 it wasn't my personal experience, but I guarantee you there are, like the girls, the, the friends. Oh, I feel like so <laughs> many chicks are gonna be mad right now. <laughs> this has not happened to me, but I know of situations where it's happened. The girls will be a little selfish in that regard. What do you They've mean? They've got. They won't definitively be selfish, but they'll have the tendency to be selfish or the option to be. Like, they're going to make the decision for her, okay? So they could spin it. Like, let's say, oh, you know, let's say you're you're Justine oh. and I'm really into Kathy. Right. Hey, I'm really into Kathy, Justine. Yeah. She's such a babe and I want to l- marry her yeah. one day. Justine will then judge me and be like, is, is Based Jeff on her really the opinions of you? Is Jeff right, really right. the right person for right. Kathy? I'm Kathy's best friend. I'm not necessarily gonna Report go back and, the way. And, and you know, it's like telephone, right? Basically. Well, it's, it's like a, a messed up version with of a telephone. deliberate, you know, desire to manipulate. Right. It can happen. It's crazy. I would always say if they do start bringing up their other dude that they're interested in, just make fun of that guy. Right. Like <laughs> always make fun of him. My favorite move is mistaking his name for something else. You know what I mean? Like if his name is like Barry. And call him like, I don't know, whatever. Like whatever other name. Like, oh, what's your friend's name again? Like Bobby. Yeah. yeah. And then she'll be like, no, come on. You know what I mean? Like not expressing interest in. That's like, really passive aggressive. Or just like, <laughs> or I, I need think you just to like, know that. Talking about sex, yeah. right? Like yeah. bringing up sex with them and like talking about it in like personal, in a personal way. Mm. That's probably a good thing to do too. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna stand behind that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Those opinions are your own. I'm just saying, get out of friend zone any way you can. Fight your way out. Because no one wants to just be in friend zone. Yeah. You know? But, okay, this is bringing up a larger conversation that if sure, can guys and girls really only just be friends? Many psycho, uh, you know, analysis have proven that. Yeah. No. No? I don't think men and women can really just be friends. Unless you're married. I don't know about that. I you mean, you have. You're I kind do. of damning I yourself. Do. Right no, now. no, I do. And there's, you know, I do. I have plenty of those friends. But I'm just saying, outside of marriage, yeah. platonically, I yeah. don't think platonic is like a real thing. Yeah, okay. And as you get older, it becomes less and less acceptable, too, I think. Well, I mean, it depends on what kind of friends. Like, you, you just see them every once in a while or yeah. every I'm, day, you know? It's true. I mean, I'm friends with plenty of women that I don't want to have sex with. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, not a tr- I'm just friends with. I'm also married, so I don't, I don't know. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna dig you out of this hole right now. Please do. <laughs> let's let's because change I'm, topics. I'm really guessing quick. for it. <laughs> <laughs> let's change topics to a much more comfortable subject: sex toys. Ah, <laughs> nice. As as we're on the subject. I mean, you know, it goes right into that. Yeah, yeah. it goes straight into it. <laughs> yeah. Raw. Uh, raw. Hey. Okay. Uh, so I want to introduce you to a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, giggling over there. Uh, I want to introduce you to a designer in uh, Barcelona uh, that has started something called the Dongiverse. And we knew it was going to happen eventually, but the Dongiverse is basically a marketplace online for people to exhibit their 3D printed sex toys. And uh, the, the name Dongiverse is a parody of the Thingiverse, which is MakerBot's mm-hmm. design community, where you can basically upload your like CAD designs right. that other people can print out on their home maker bots. Right. But the Dongiverse <laughs> is the digital sex toy version of that. The Dongiverse. So check this out. I actually have I have to keep reloading this because CBS continues to can block show, it for me. We can show this, right? We can show that. I mean, yeah, they're are, phallic. And, and those are just candles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you describe what we're looking at here? It's not a missile. It looks like one, but I don't know. Basically, these are vibrators and it's other a community types of where people toys. can can three D print dildos. Is what we're looking at. <laughs> now, what I'm curious about, and you can laugh at the word dildo, uh, you know, that's fine. <laughs> but what I want to know if this is safe. Can yeah. people, you know, play with these and not have to worry about getting, you know, hurt? Yeah. So what's interesting about this is that he doesn't encourage you to use a MakerBot because right now MakerBot only prints in ABS plastic. You need silicone. And resin. Ugh. Which, oh, and, and those two which will things, chafe your willy. <laughs> yeah. right. Not just chafe, but shard. <laughs> and you don't want the word shard Ugh. and sex toys. No. Splinters. Yeah, no. splinters. So these are unfinished 
uh, hard, like they're unfinished materials. So if you print out something in, re in resin or ceramic, whatever, or ABS plastic, it's not really going to be that comfortable. Right. I guess it depends on what kind of sex toy you're doing. If it's just like a pincher, then it's probably fine. If it's something that you insert, <laughs> probably not a good idea. So anyway, <laughs> he's recommending that you be safe using this. And if you do print out something in a safe uh, material like ceramic, then he recommends uh, – Using it once mm. and then discarding it. So yeah. it's kind of like a one and done kind of thing. Yeah, disposable. Yeah, disposable. Once. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, <laughs> did someone like, just knock on the door? No, okay. I don't know. Maybe. All right, I'm getting They're saying, right stop there. talking about what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> because basically the prints aren't watertight. I mean, we're looking at uh, an example of it right here. And there's grooves all in it. There are holes in it and stuff. So it's obviously not water soluble if you use a lubricant with it. It's impossible to clean. And yeah, I'm not, I'm so you gonna, never want to use it I'm again. I'm really shocked that this is a real community because there's no late, like I said, there's no latex 3D printer, is there? Mm, no. There's no silicon one? No. We need rubbery stuff. Right. Not right. hard plastic. Another, another sex toy 3D printed marketplace is called makerlove.com. And we can actually show this. This is kind of interesting. They don't actually make sex toys. They make holders. Sheaths, holsters for sex toys, <laughs> like what we're looking at here. So uh, these are 3D printed dildo smugglers. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what we're looking at here is a heart that you insert your favorite sex toy into right. to hold on your countertop, on your dresser. Yeah, right in front of everybody. Whatever. You put it on the kitchen table. I don't know where you put sex <laughs> yeah, toys. Centerpiece. I don't, I don't yeah, exactly. know. Exactly. You, you know what they them. should all be? They should all just be sock drawers. Yeah, that's where yeah. everyone puts that stuff. Right. <laughs> this thing prints out 3D sock drawers. Right. Look at Thank you. Sorry, I wasn't I wasn't expecting you to show that. Show it. You want to show? <laughs> no, 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 that's enough. It's if you cut it, you cut it. Look, I mean, everyone's seen a dildo <laughs> before. Come on, <laughs> we're beyond that. Uh, oh, let, I, let's man. just talk about some of the. Let, let me Sur just say some of these names because <laughs> they're kind of funny. Surrounded by children. Here's <laughs> one called the Organic Communicator. One's called the Three Dildo. See, what they did there was they used the D in 3D to start the word dildo. Oh, so it's like three dash yeah. dildo. The gotcha. slender toy. The, yep. the Hello Pussycat is something that I'm a little disturbed by. Can I see this? Uh, yeah, let's uh, scroll up a little. Yeah, there we go. I just want to see it and we can describe yeah, you can, it. You can, you can oh, so the Hello, oh, so it's basically a dildo with the head of a cat. Yeah, it's, it's Hello Kitty. Right, gotcha. But Hello Kitty, I mean, her facial expression is... Pretty dull here because there's not a lot of detail. It makes it look very creepy. Yeah, it's almost like a mummified Hello Kitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. no, thank you. But what's even more disturbing about this is that the designer from Barcelona that started uh, the Dongiverse, he got his start a few years ago, and he actually made news by bringing children's drawings to life using a 3D I printer. I heard about that. So he was accepting applications from children. That's who cool. Would send no, well, it, it was cool. Until they started making sex toys now. Well, like you can't bridge that gap. You know, sure like you can. You get your start making children's Some, toys, then make sex people's toys. People's lives take interesting turns. I have no problem with that. You got to have transitional material. As long as there's them. no overlap. <laughs> yeah. You know? Let's well, that's what overlap. Hello Kitty is. Well, uh, Hello Kitty has a very adult audience, too. Let's not forget about that. Yeah. Right? Hello Kitty is not just for kids. Hello I know Titty. plenty of, I know, <laughs> I know plenty of people above the age of 30 that are into Hello Kitty. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, but yeah. they're not using them for this purpose. Well, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> That's what it is. This is very awkward in this room right yeah, now. Yeah, no, we, uh, we, we got to move on. We must move on. <laughs> Super awkward. Do you want to do anything else before we hit up uh, calls from the public? Uh, I think we've exhausted the awkward. I mean, there's one more <laughs> And I've story. already read that story. We're not. Yeah, there's one more story here that might make you feel a little more awkward. Do you want to talk about it? or? I mean, if we've you already... would like to do it, let's do it, and then we can get the calls. Okay, this is kind of a heartwarming story. Okay. Right? Yeah. There's nothing bad about this. I don't know. I, I didn't read it. I'm sorry. Oh, you didn't read it. I saw the headline and that sort of stuff, but I don't know the, the details. Go. Were um, either of you guys in fraternities in no, college? No. no. You were not in fraternities. Proudly not. Negative. When you, when you think about fraternities, when I say the word frat, yeah. you immediately think of stereotypes, stigmas attached to those well, Greek communities, right? Sure. I was friends with a lot of kids in frats. Right. Yeah. So what's the stereotype? Well, you know, they all drink too much and they, you know, abuse people. A lot people of bravado and, yeah. and machismo yeah, and all that kind communism. of stuff. Yeah, communism. Yeah, nice. right? They're not typically open to subjects like LGBT. Oh, I don't know right. about that, but oh, sure. Okay, but I'm, I'm just saying that's a stigma. That's not what I okay, think. Okay, right. Whatever. Gotcha. Um, so uh, usually they're pretty gruff into the macho stuff like this, but the exception to the rule is a uh, is Phi Alpha Tau. I think that's how you say it. 
okay. at Emerson University in Massachusetts. Oh, that's where uh, Freshdick went. Yeah, he went to Emerson. Right. So uh, that that uh, what's it what is it called? Oh yeah, Phi Alpha Tau. Yeah. They uh, they have a sophomore in there named Donnie Collins. Okay. Who's actually a male to female transgender, which is really male. interesting because. Male to female transgender. He would, and, he's, and this person is in the fraternity? He is in the fraternity, yeah. He's so only he a was sophomore a... Yet now, but as a freshman, he joined this fraternity, Phi Alpha So Cal. he became a male? He became a, He's in the process of becoming a female. So when he entered the fraternity, he was a man. Mm-hmm. And now he's becoming a woman. Right. He should join a sorority. Well, I guess he maybe should. Yeah. But so anyway, what's the story well, about? it's because when he started, he started as a man. Gotcha. So uh, anyway, uh, th- his name is Donnie Collins, and okay. uh, unfortunately, the health insurance provided to him by Emerson won't allow him to get the breast augmentation surgery that he wants because they consider it more cosmetic it than is, medical. Look, you want to become a man, you're a woman, that's fine. You want to go vice versa, do whatever you want. Right. But I, uh, this sort of uh, stuff probably shouldn't be covered. Right? I, I mean... I don't know. I don't it's know. Elective. What it's elective. It's elective. I don't. I'm not going to make a uh, judgment either I'm just way saying, because I, I'm not trying. I'm not judging. Myself. I'm not judging. But it's elective. Elective surgery. Either way, right? The uh, they won't cover it financially because they have determined it to be uh, cosmetic, right? Not surgical. So he's raising. He's been raising money for the procedure for several months now, but unfortunately, he hasn't been able to raise the eight thousand one hundred dollars that it's going to cost. Mm-hmm. So his brothers at Phi Alpha Tau have actually started an Indiegogo campaign. Oh, cool! Which has got to be one of the most interesting crowdfunded campaigns to donate to uh, to his cause. Right. So Donnie Collins, check this out. Uh, they're raising money for his uh, prospective brother to receive elective surgery. Um, and there's a video that features Donnie himself, and uh, they're actually already raised past the eight thousand they were initially looking for, um, and now they're at sixteen thousand three seventy seven. So uh, they've already surpassed it. Um, you can't even contribute to it anymore. But all excess money is going to be given to the Jim Collins Foundation, which I'm not sure what that does. Forgive me for not doing the research on that, yeah. but uh, you know it's all going to be donated to that cause. Yeah. That's okay. Cool. That's, pretty that's, cool. That's, that is yeah, pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. That is very. Uh, like you said, against the grain of what you would imagine a fraternity would be like. Yeah, breaking it's a, stereotypes. It's a very heartwarming yeah. story. We've heard a lot about this kind of stuff lately, right? Uh, against Me. Yes. It was a band that, that, that did something similar. The lead singer of Against Me, his name was uh, Tom Gable. Mm-hmm. And now he goes by Laura Jean Grace. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing them uh, next month. Have they put out any new music Well, they have featuring a... his new identity? Uh, I don't know. I've seen videos of him with his new look. Uh huh. Um, I guess as long as his voice her, doesn't I'm change. I'm sorry, her. It's a girl. Right. He's a woman now. It has her his, voice changed? Her voice is, sounds the same. Good. And that was a staple of the band, you know, that voice. Right. Um, I'm going to see them next week, and I know they have a new record out com- uh, coming out called um, uh, Trans- Dis Transmorphia Blues or something like that. Uh-huh. So clearly it's going to deal with. You know, bowling right. is what the album's going to be. <laughs> no, but no, I'm, I'm psyched. I love those guys. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got a couple minutes for calls from the public. Public. Pubic. We might as well get it all out now, <laughs> so Jeff. Get it all out now. Calls from public time. Time to show the love. Go. 866-404-CNET. 404 so there's a lot of uh, talk about Google Glass. It's back in the news. They've been uh, Google's been letting people check it out on a more intimate basis. Uh-huh. People have been writing stuff up about it. I think we have something up, don't we? Yeah. So uh, everyone's getting hands-on with Google Glass. We've been a little skeptical about the whole thing because, it's, you know, it's, th- it's a tough pill to swallow. Here's someone who clearly feels the opposite way. Hi, 404. This is Adam from Washington, D.C. I just wanted to say that I'm a little disappointed that you guys are on the pessimistic side of Google Glass. The privacy and fashion concerns will be trivial after people see the revolution that will take place. Well, see, how can you speak so definitively about something that you don't have? <laughs> I know that would sound like I was doing the same thing with the Pebble Watch, but you'll just have to figure <laughs> that shit out for yourself. Seriously. It will augment your eyes with camera and zoom, augment your brain with Googling on the fly and Google Translate, augment your memory by taking pictures of your daily life. The real revolution will be when they release one with two full-size lenses. It will bring the entire Internet into the real world. It will augment reality and augment you as a person. 
I mean, when, when, when people say that Google Glasses are going to augment your reality, it's not doing anything that you couldn't already do just by having a phone in your hand. No, but it yeah. is already augmented Google reality. things. You know, voice recognition already exists. Cameras already exist. The only difference is that it's now on your face, which is like weird because in the video, look, so uh, Topolsky posted a review of uh, of the initial version on Impressions. Uh, his, his initial impression is going to be updated. But uh, yeah, in it he talks about how their messaging is to get technology out of the way. But when they say out of your way, I, I wouldn't want that on my face. You know what I mean? Like it, it's the same idea as the Pebble Watch. You no, know, this is just another device that you're gonna have to charge. And I don't know. I think an argument can also be made for how it's gonna change social interaction. Well, right? Like, look, you're not wrong you, about the any etiquette of that. is totally gonna change, right? Like you right. you act completely differently when someone is holding a phone up to your face and sure, video sure, taping sure. you. Versus when you're just having a normal conversation. If someone has these glasses on, you're not going to treat them the same way that you would if they didn't have it. Right. First off, not everyone's going to realize what they are right away. Right. People are going to think they're just glasses. Right. Uh, number two, it is not the same thing as the Pebble Watch. It's simply not. Because How the is Pebble, it different? Because the, you just proved it. can it. technically do different things, but right, it's but basically just, just taking it. the functions of your phone and putting it as wearable technology. Right, but that's okay because we pretty much wear our phones as it is. Yeah. And a watch is a watch with extended functionality. This is a visor that's only purpose is to interact with your world through your eyeballs. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, people are going to have a little problem with being recorded all the time. But guess what? You're recorded all day anyway. You are. Maybe not everything you say, but yeah. your actions are. I forget what they said. Just walking to Madison Square Garden or whatever it is, the amount of times that you're on videotape is astonishing. Uh -huh. Right? So you're on tape all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying you should there then forego your privacy and just sort of, you know, not care anymore but it is what it is right. it's an it's an inevitability I just because hate... this is where we're headed yeah but it doesn't have to be that way i mean maybe this is just my pessimism about technology but yeah, i share some it's of gonna that. be such a disruption and there are so many things in our <laughs> lives right now that disrupt everyday life and this is just gonna take it to a next level that i think nobody will enjoy we'll see we'll see uh, it... look west d in the chat room because a good point he's like the idea is to give people the ability to feed the itch to check your smartphone while still making actual eye contact but there should be quotes there eye contact is what i mean it's not really going to be eye contact it's going to be the equivalent of what we talked about a couple days ago is yeah. like those googly glasses that make you look like you're awake <laughs> but you're actually sleeping behind it yeah well it's the same thing we are information addicts right we are he, we are you are sure. i am ariel is mm -hmm. everyone is so maybe maybe this will streamline it maybe it'll make it not as intrusive if you know i, I don't know we have. To, I would love to try them out for a while. I personally don't want them. Yeah. Seeing what I've seen of the demo videos and reading the crap that's out there, I don't want it right now. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. There's really not going to be any way to avoid this because, you know, even beyond our lifetime. Yeah. It's. It sounds like this is where we're headed. I can read a headline from the future that's going to say, "Kid gets mugged from wearing his Google Glass." You know, like well, that's going to happen so much. No, I was. I'm thinking more of like, how will our bodies deal with the biometric implants that are going to happen. Right. Probably within our lifetime. Google Glass. It's already starting. Cancer. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, next call, dealing with the Friday subject material about musicians. Hey, 404. This is Ludwig from Scott. Um, you listen to the Thursday show. I'm a little behind. Uh, Spear was on. He was talking uh, about Spotify. And um, Justin made the argument that uh, making music is something that you do as a hobby. Well, that's the same kind of argument saying, well, you know, blogs are a dime a dozen nowadays. Writing is just a hobby. And, you know, reviewers are a dime a dozen. It's just a hobby nowadays. Do you guys not want to get paid for your work? They have every right to expect every cent that they need to come in and more. Uh, if you work for something, you need to get paid for it, in my opinion. Anyway, take that with a grain of salt. Bye. All right, do you want to respond to this first? Because sure. I, I have something to say That's too. not what I meant at all. I'm not saying that musicians shouldn't get paid for their work. Obviously, that's not the case. I have friends in this room, outside of this room, that make music, and they should certainly be getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's getting a lot harder to make money for the rest of your life making music. Well, I think So that... if you want to do that, you may have to put your music in a commercial. You know, you may have to tour for the rest of your life. You know, you may have to be 65 years old and still be making music. And if your passion is doing that, then go for it. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to take money out of the mouths of musicians. Of course Obviously, not. I love of course music not. myself. Of course not. I think the, it's much simpler than that. I think, you know, when you say m music is a hobby, I think it's, it's not only about that. It's 
you know, he says reviewers are a dime a dozen, writers are a dime a dozen, bloggers are a dime a dozen. You're right, they are. That's true. But good ones get paid and shitty ones don't. And right. that's what that's mm. what it's all about. Like you got to be good. Yeah. If great, you can play guitar and you sing and but you're not good, you're not right. going to you're not going to do well. Right. So it's it's, you know, it's hopefully the good business. stuff rises to the top. Even mm-hmm. even when you are good, you might not succeed yeah, in it. Yeah. You're you know 100% I mean? right, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even when you're not good, you might when even when you are good, you might not. Yeah. Be. I think mm-hmm. the best way to put it is if you if you go into the field of music, you need to be ready, prepared to not make money, and you got to be okay with that. Yeah, right, you absolutely, know? good so advice. The, the love of it needs to to be the main focus. You know yeah. what I mean, and that's why you do it. You yeah, hundred I mean? percent. Um, all right, very very good point, Ariel. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Then the next dude calls in. I'm not going to play because it it's super long. He talks about how sitting down. And the positions that we were talking about yesterday that have evolved because of our reliance on technology, mm-hmm. the perch, all those things that we talked about. He says a doctor who wrote a book says that sitting down for eight hours a day is the equivalent of not necessarily smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, <laughs> okay, but the detrimental side effects are similar. Not that you're going to get lung cancer, uh-huh. but that you just it's just not good for you. Is, uh, now, I, I've mean? never heard of that. I know. I think it's just all about, like, averaging everything. You know, like, even someone who smokes a pack a day and someone who sits down. Maybe the correlation is that someone who smokes isn't necessarily going to be an avid athlete. I don't know. And someone who sits at you a know computer what? for eight hours may be the same. Let's not, let's not pass final judgment Call back and make it shorter than two minutes and 50 seconds no. and explain it to us in a quicker fashion. And we'll try and, uh, you know, pass that along to the audience. And we can all talk about it some more. 866-404-CNET is the number to call. You can reach us through email, the 404 at CNET.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, stuff, mm. SoundCloud, friend Pinterest, yeah. FriendZone, <laughs> MySpace, <laughs> Friendster, <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> All that stuff. Get in touch with us. Um, we're on the hook for an AMA for us. What do you mean? We're in a, we have to do an AMA. Is that is that get handed down from above? No. You just want to. It's that's handed down. When I say above, that's handed down from the, the listening audience. They want us to do one. So maybe we can do an AMA localized to our subreddit. We don't have that's to do it on idea. the regular one. Sure. So let's do that. We're gonna do one. So the three of us will do an well, AMA. We'll what? start it. You wanna like set a date or a time or? We'll I mean, okay, we'll figure it out. It can go on forever, so it doesn't matter. Why don't people just send us questions? Yeah. They or, can do I'd that. I'd rather we can, like, it be in the Reddit. You want to do it yeah, on we'll do Reddit? It yeah. Okay. So keep your eyes peeled. Reddit.com slash r slash the 404. All right? Someone said, uh, someone uh, thinks I said limp in instead of LinkedIn. Limped in. <laughs> said, yes, it's a different <laughs> sort of social network. We caused this. Back here yeah. tomorrow, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. It's the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. Have a great Wednesday. Back here tomorrow, finishing up February. It's yeah. over. We'll see you. <laughs>